you mentioned last mirror. Yeah. I have now bought five plants over the last 10 years and they just haven't taken. And yet a house four doors up has a magnificent display. I've got them in my back garden, but the back garden is very pr prone to flooding. Yeah. Is that? Yeah, rotted off probably. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So could you, um, and Alstomir's like to have quite a bit of room as well. Yeah. Um, have you got room to put perhaps a raised bed or something, a small raised bed? It, it is a raised bed. How, ra how raised is it? Probably about that raised. If you could double it, so, so yeah. we've got ours, uh, uh, if you could do it to about yay high, right. Right, yeah. Um, but when you prepare that bed, make sure that you've got a really good mix of soil, of grit, of yeah. mulch, so you're getting lots of, so there's lots of sort of um, room for the roots to grow, but also for the, the water to drain off. So drainage, right. drainage is really, really important. Yeah. Um, if your soil, your current raised bed is a bit landlocked, then I would suggest, you know, hoof it out, get a load of stone and shingle down, so you've yeah. got some really good drainage. But then when you plant your alstomerias, plant them with lots of gritty soil as well. Right. And bury them quite deep. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Ours are put down probably about sort of four inches down. Right. And every year we throw another couple of inches of mulch on it as well. Yeah. And, and one of the things we found with alstomerias in the last couple of years, it gave us a, a real heart attack. It happened for the first time last year. No, the year before with that really hot summer. Suddenly, they looked like they were dying off. And we invested hundreds of pounds as we've got three huge Astoria beds and they looked like they were all dying off and I was like oh my god what's happening here and I was like I just I couldn't figure it out and then when the weather cooled down and we had some rain it started growing again the next year it was uh, the opposite it was the rains they started they started going really spindly and they were flowering and then I did a little bit, bit of research and their origin is in is Africa and um, South Africa and basically they go dormant so if it gets too hot they go dormant if it gets too wet they go dormant and so there were two occasions that i thought i'd lost them and so what i learned is that if they seem to be struggling and you've got a heat event or a cold event going on it literally i, I did it the first time last year and i was like i'm really i could really regret this and i pulled you don't cut astromerias you pull them i pulled every single one and we're talking hundreds i pulled every single one i threw an extra bit of mulch fed them and about two weeks later Hallelujah, and they all come back. And every every year now, we're, ha we're this is the third year we've had another event where it's either been too wet, too hot, and um, they've started to go to sleep. So I've pulled them all up. If, if I'd have left them, we'd have just had loads of foliage, or it'd yeah. just been too spindly, and yeah. there'd have been nothing. Yeah. But they are amazing, and you get a good oh, ten years out of them. I just love them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I've just been so frustrated that I can't grow them. If yeah. you're struggling with a wet garden, I know um, United Utilities garden at the uh, RHS shows this year were all about what about changing a wet garden into a water saving garden. So the RHS actually has an article on it with quite a lot of advice on different little ideas that you can do to try to start diverting some of the water so that yeah. it goes into one particular point and you've got the rest then to play with. I made a little look on their website and the article, right. United Utilities did a big study on it last year about right. flooding and flood water resistance and things like that. So their whole garden was on about how to take the rainfall and store it, get it yeah. out of the soil. So they might have some ideas maybe if you didn't want to go to the hole to yeah. dig it up and because right. otherwise it would be dig it all up and yeah. start from scratch. <laughs> Which yeah, no one really yeah. wants and to do. They, and, it's it's, and it's expensive. Also, yeah. they're very expensive to buy. You get, you really get such an amazing yeah. you know, lifespan and productivity out of them. They are very, very expensive. Yeah. And the other thing that I would say about Astromeria is, is that if you are going to invest in them, push the boat out and get a fairly mature Astromeria. Mm -hmm. Don't get a little tiny one like yeah. that. I've, the I've ones I've bought are in pots, you know, that size. Yeah. And then, yeah. So to see them just disappear, just disappear. I put it down to slugs. Because everything else has been slugged. They don't seem to be bothered, actually. They don't seem to be bothered by Do they not? I, I, was, I, I it, yeah. think it's probably the wetness, the wetness. in the garden, especially if slugs are your, are your main yeah. pest in yeah. your garden. You could put a little, there's a little pond in the corner, get some frogs, get some frogs in. Not a pond. Mm -hmm. I still have to do it. Because literally, the yeah. grass. 
it's underwater. Yeah. When they have really bad, it's a big yeah, problem. Yeah. It's a it's a big problem with like new build. I know a lot of people who've bought new homes. A lot of the new build gardens mm. have no drainage. Like this. Flooding yeah. is, I think, that's something that we're gonna see a lot of people yeah. like struggling with. Because I think, like we were saying before about how wonky hasn't struggled to volunteer, and we're very everyone's kind of learning now about how important it is to your, to mental health and physical health to do and how good gardening can be for it. So we're quite, it's kind of a good time to get into it because there's lots of people yeah, coming really in with new ideas and different, yeah. yeah. So I would kind of just try and try and think of some work around it. But surprisingly, if you've already got a pond in, because mm. your pond's are a lot lower than the rest of the garden. It, well, the, the reservoir that we've put in is sort of that deep. Yeah. And it must be probably the size of this table. Mm -hmm. Might need some light like some, some, some run. Yeah, yeah. or oh, run off. Yeah. Run's going to be Fix the next channels. Thing. Yeah, so it's, it's got some work to run. Yeah, because yeah. if it's yeah. just because it might just be getting it at the right angle so it starts running properly. Yeah, but we have got a natural spring at the bottom oh, of the yeah. garden as well. So you're it's always going to be wet. Yeah. yeah, I mean the grass is lovely in a drought. Clever plants in there. Clever plants in there. Yeah. Yeah.